Good morning, everybody. My name is Pearl Creviston. I'm the Director of Financial Aid here at Central Texas College. I'd like to thank you for joining us this morning. As usual, Financial Aid has money available for you, but right now, one of the things that I'd like to really emphasize is the CARISA funding and the ARP, which is the American Rescue Plan. Both of these available fundings are for starting in the fall term. And there are electronic applications available. I do know today we are having technical issues and you may not be able to complete that application at this moment, but we anticipate it will be available again within just a few hours. And the funding is substantial. So if you are registering for fall classes and you are in 11 or fewer hours, you will qualify for up to $1,000 of free financial aid. And if you're in 12 or more credit hours, you will qualify for up to $2,000 in financial aid. That is for the American Rescue Plan, which is given to the schools from the Department of Education. And we are to award that to students that are enrolled in classes. And the way those funding that funding will be released is we will put it out once you're awarded and it will show in your award screen with an estimated status. That's an E. That means you cannot accept it. And the reason for that is we just need to ensure that you're still enrolled in the classes that you were awarded for by the last day of dropping classes. So once students have adjusted their schedules and completed all of their enrollment, we will then go in and automatically accept and transmit that money to the business office. So what happens with that money once I transmit it to the business office is on the American Rescue Plan, you have an option to check a box if you want those funds applied to your classes and your charges that you have outstanding. And then what the business office will do is actually apply those charges pay for your charges outstanding for tuition or fees, and then mail you any balance that was not used for, for that purpose. You are not forced or obligated to check that box, however. You can actually not check the box, and then what will happen is all of the funding will be sent to you directly. So here again in financial aid, we always encourage students that are receiving any type of financial aid to please go in and sign up on student finance section of student self-serve for direct deposit. And the reason we emphasize this is because your financial aid will be mailed by check if you do not sign up for direct deposit. And it may take up to a week to seven days for you to receive those fundings. However, if you do direct deposit, they will be deposited to your bank account the same day that we transmit those funds and they will apply charges and return the balance to you much, much sooner as a direct deposit. The other reason is due to the military location moves, people are transient in this area and often move before they get a balance check. So to avoid all of that, I just highly recommend that you please sign up for direct deposit. I can tell you what happens to a lot of the return checks from the Department of Education, whether it be a loan check, a Pell check, a financial aid balance check of any kind. They come back to the school ultimately, and we void those checks and return the funds to the Department of Education. So you may actually lose out on funding if you do not sign up for direct deposit and you've moved and you never received those funds. One other topic while we're on that subject that I'd kind of like to cover because this does happen a lot is students will oftentimes receive a balance check, put it off to the side and never cash it, never deposit it, never do anything with it. And then maybe a year later, they'll find it and call us and say, can I go cash this check now? Unfortunately, the answer is no. After about 90 days, if the check has not been cleared through our banks, those checks get voided. And again, the funds are returned to Department of Education. Sometimes depending on timing, 
I can reissue those funds to you if the aid year has not been closed out by Department of Ed, and we certainly work to do that if at all possible. Otherwise, you may just simply lose out on that funding. So again, I'm stressing and emphasizing, please sign up for direct deposit if you can. The other award other than American Rescue Plan is Carissa. Many, many, many students were already awarded Carissa for spring and summer. And our plan, once we are at our last day of um, enroll, uh, the last day that you have to drop a class, is to go back and look at all of those students that were enrolled and received Carissa funding already and automatically award them if they're enrolled in fall classes again. So you may not need to reapply for Carissa. Our plan is to automatically award that. And it would be sometime after middle of September before we would do that. But hopefully we'll still have enough funding that we'll be able to release additional funds to those of you who have come back and are enrolled again for the fall term. So the Carissa grant and the ARP grant were both given to CTC from the Department of Education and the purpose is to help students who have been impacted due to COVID. And the application gives you many options to fill out and to look at and to choose as to in what way were you impacted. But it's pretty rare that we turn an applicant down. So I highly encourage everyone to please apply, especially for the ARP. We have a very large funding of that that we're trying to allocate out to students. So for the emergency grant aid, that pretty much covers it. But since I always do a financial aid session, Anyway, I wanted to kind of touch on the FAFSA process, let you all know that FAFSA process is a requirement if you're trying to receive Pell Grant, which is the free financial aid, student loans, SEOG, which is supplemental educational opportunity grant, or be a financial aid work study. So once you complete a FAFSA application, you do that every year in October is when the new application opens for the following a year from then, aid year. It's a little confusing, but what Department of Ed has done is set up these FAFSA so early that there's no reason for a student not to have it completed by the time classes start each year in August. So for October 21, for instance, they're going to open the FAFSA application for the 22-23 school year, which would be next fall, not the one that we're getting ready to start in a few weeks. So always do a FAFSA application, whether you're using VA, TA, tuition assistance through the military, or any other form of aid. So the CARISA and the ARP, as I stated, was a very large award of $2,000, and our tuition may not even cost you that much. And if you qualify for Pell Grant as well, you can still receive all of that funding. The whole point of the Department of Education is trying to assist students get through these difficult times right now and still be able to complete their education. So it's extremely important that you try and get as much financial aid as you can qualify for and try not to borrow financial aid loans. So I, I am an advocate for not borrowing student loans at CTC because once you move on and try to obtain a bachelor's degree at a higher institution, you will need loans in order to pay for your tuition nine times out of 10 because the costs are gonna be substantially higher. So I highly encourage everyone to please go out and apply for student uh, financial aid under studentaid.gov is the website. And that used to be FAFSA.gov, but they've changed it now. And it is actually studentaid, all one word, .gov. And that will take you to the Department of Education website, which gives you all of the information you could possibly have for any of the aid that you qualify for under Title IV. One of the other things I mentioned in the list of items you can obtain from doing a FAFSA application is work study. And we don't talk often enough about that program, but what the work study program is, is it gives you an opportunity to work part-time at the college. 
So you're already here taking classes and then you can come in and work part time, earn money and not have to leave the campus. So what we do, for instance, we have had over years, many, many work studies and they actually want to work in the financial aid office. So we work with you each semester as your schedule changes, which a lot of employers can't do. So you may work at Applebee's or someplace and you have a shift and you have to be at that shift continuously at the same time. And now you've changed your classes and you actually have a class during that time. Some employers may work with you, others may not, but I can tell you as a work study, we are required to work with you. So when you work for CTC and you're in the financial aid office and you typically have classes in the morning, we would then allow you to work in the afternoon. In the next term, all your classes may be in the afternoon, so we will adjust your work schedule so that you can actually work when you're not in classes. So it's an ideal situation. It's a great way to earn money. You don't have to commute anywhere. You're already here and you can be a work study. We have work study applicants that work in the gym, for instance, that's where they'd really like to work. You can specify that and say, you know, I really want to learn about physical education. I want to learn about those programs that are available over there. Being a work study would be a great way for you to find out about that and to learn that. Others that want to be in the nursing program, for instance, may be a work study in the nursing program in that area. So it can really help you learn a little bit more about what it is you're here trying to get your education for and be able to give you some real work experience in that field. So it's an awesome opportunity for students and I highly encourage it if you have a Pell Grant eligible FAFSA, that means you've demonstrated need, which is what is required. You can also apply and there is an application in eForms for that and it is work study. It's financial aid work study program and you can apply for that. Those applications come to the financial aid office and Brandy Sappenfield is our contact person for that and she would be the person to contact for any work study information you have or questions. That is a bit of an overview of a lot of different types of awards, but I did mention uh, a couple of things. One was TA, which is your financial aid that you receive for being active duty military member. And many of you that are TA users have always used Go Army Ed, and they have now transitioned to what is called Army Ignite. So make sure you're aware of that and you start working with that process. And if you run into difficulties with that process, I would encourage you to contact the accounts receivable department. They are set up at CTC to help with any issues that you may have with Army Ignite. Patrice Kennerson and our VA office, I believe, Bruce, is Patrice still going to present this week also? Yes, yeah, she will be Thursday at 10 a.m. So okay. anyone with military education benefits can right. tune in for sure. And so I'm not going to go into a lot of VA information other than you do need to apply for veterans benefits if you want to try and use that. And you do that with the Veterans Administration. They will send you a form that lets you know which of the VA benefits you are uh, able to apply for and you would bring that to the VA office. But Patrice will be doing a presentation on Thursday and talk to you more about the VA. One we of did the have a question, Pearl. I'm sorry, I didn't want to run it up. We had a question do. come in. Sure. Uh, when do we apply for the TEOG for the upcoming year? You can send an email to Brandy Sappenfield at any time and she will determine whether or not you're eligible for TEOG and put that information out. And she is the one that is in charge of awarding that in the financial aid office. Were there any other questions? I don't have any in the WebEx chat and I'm Check with Maricela to see if anything, not yet, nothing not else yet? has come Okay, through. well, let me just say one other big thing I wanted to we're very excited about is we are having an open house at Central Texas College. And Bruce, I think I'll let you kind of cover that just to give the exact dates and times. And okay. I'm gonna 
I don't want to give out misinformation, but I know we're all very excited about it. I will be there as well in the main hub talking about financial aid. So all departments are participating in this open house and it's an awesome opportunity for you all to come out, especially those that haven't been able to get on campus for a long time. So we're yeah. looking forward to that. And I'm going to ask Bruce if he would cover more information about that, please. I sure, sure will. Uh, yes, this Saturday, August 14th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll open at 9 and the campus center will kind of give a brief overview. Um, you'll be able to meet with uh, some advisors. The registration office will be open. You can get some assistance with that as well. Uh, the bookstore will be open. So if there's books that you need to purchase or questions you have of them, they'll be available. Each of the academic departments will be available. They'll have fun activities and games as well as information for you. So you can stop by each one, meet some of the faculty members, play some fun games, win some prizes and that kind of thing. But most importantly, it's a chance to tour the uh, facilities. Each campus building like industrial tech will have hands on uh, demonstrations going on most of the day. So you can stop by there if you're an industrial tech student or interested in that area. You can see what they're doing. Each one of the programs, HVAC, welding, uh, uh, graphics and printing, all of those will be active. Um, our ag science department will have some fun activity games and you can kind of check out the animals and things that we have on stock here. Nursing department will have a sim lab a demonstration going on. So there'll be something for everybody. We'll have a rock climbing wall, a bouncy house, all kinds of family fun activities, free lunch too. Um, and if you're one of the first 100 students to register uh, for the open house, then you'll get a free t-shirt. So we've got a lot of things going on, but most importantly, it's a great chance to tour the campus and get answers to your questions. Meet the people that that you've been trying to get a hold of and that kind of thing and 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 get answers to your questions and, and get the assistance that you need. So you have a smooth start to your educational career here at CTC. So we strongly encourage you to come out and visit and, and meet everybody. So Pearl, if, if you don't mind, can we go back to the, the ARP and I can and we can kind of uh, share the screen a little bit if you want sure. share my screen and uh, and then okay. we can uh, kind of just walk them through just a little bit of uh, of where the eligibility is and, and that kind of thing. So um, just real quick, I'm trying to get to that page right now as we can. So, all right, I'm going to share the screen real quick. And if you can just uh, walk us through just a little bit of brief, just a brief overview sure. of, uh, of just so if there in case there's any questions. So hopefully you guys can see that. So, and the, and the first uh, grant that uh, Ms. Kravitzer was talking about was the American Rescue Plan student aid. So, and so, yes, on this page, once you go in here, you'll be able to see what the aid is for, how much the awards are, and the reason they have acronyms. Look at that name, Corona Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act aid. We call her Carissa. It's a lot easier, C-R-R-S-A-A. But it is um, that is one of the grants that is also from the Department of Education. So that one is $500 per student. And as you click on these blue underlined links, they'll take you to more information as well as a link to get you to the application itself. And as I stated right now, both applications, I believe, may be down, but we should have them up shortly sometime today and you can go ahead and uh, apply for those. The eligibility for this one, Bruce just opened for the American Rescue Plan is you need to be in at least three hours in order to qualify for it. And then up to 11 hours will give you $1,000. And if you're in 12 or more hours, it'll be $2,000. So it is a substantial award. And this this money can be used by you. We don't dictate how you spend this money or what you do with it. It is to help you right now while the times have been hard under COVID. So if you can go back, Bruce, on that other one, there's a reskilling grant. I can touch on that a little bit as well. Okay. Let me get back to that. Oh, I just went sure. I just I just hit Chris, sorry. sorry. There's a reskilling grant. Okay. The reskilling grant is one that is uh, what we're primarily been asked to do is to help students that are in a position where maybe you've been out of school for a while. However, you used to go to CTC or you used to go to another college and you're almost done with that program that you started in. This grant was designed to help you cover cost and be able to graduate within a year or sooner and get you employable and put back out into the workforce. 
So maybe you've been working in an area and you don't want to work in that area, or maybe that jobs are not are very limited and you're not able to find a job and you want to try and retrain, reskill. That's what this is for. And this grant you can also apply for, and you'll see the e-forms and the portals all at the bottom, all the underlying links, and that'll take you to the application as well. And then we all evaluate that as it comes through to determine if you're eligible. So we the requirements are a little odd, but what it says is you must not have been enrolled for at least six months and in the previous six months, but you're coming back to finish a degree. So what we're seeing is several people are applying for this and maybe they haven't even been to school in the last year, but they left CTC or other colleges for whatever reason, life gets in the way and people don't often finish, but they're pretty close and they could finish. So they'll come back and apply for this reskilling grant. It's ideal, especially for certificate programs. If you are in and out within a year and can get retrained and go right into a work field, because those are the jobs that are in demand and um, complete it within a year or, or less. Like I said, it depends on how many credit hours you may have already taken. So if you could go back to the, um, I don't know if we had another award listed. Under yeah, here. Of course, we haven't done the crystal, but before we do that one, let me just uh, emphasize, if you get a chance to view this video on this page, this is Alyssa. She is a work study student, as a matter of fact. She works at our Mayburn Science Theater, and she received the reskilling grant. So she's got a nice little story. It's a short video. So if, if you guys awesome. who are watching have a chance to, to tune in, check that video out, and that'll tell you a little bit more about how, how she's able to use the reskilling grant to stay in school. She's a graphic graphics and printing major. And again, she's another work study student. So a success story. <laughs> Great. So, and here's the Carissa. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Carissa is uh, that was one of the, the second award. The first one we had was called CARES Act grant, but we used all of that funding up very quickly. We had just as much available for Carissa, and this is the one that you need to be in at least three hours again. And if you are, you will receive $500. So this one doesn't vary based on the number of hours you're in, like the other one, the ARP did. So you can use this for any program. The uh, beauty of the ARP and the Carissa now is you are not required to have a FAFSA application on file to qualify for these. We did award need-based first, and those timeframes have passed on both of these, but anybody can apply. So even if, for instance, and this is what I really like about the ARP and the Carissa, is you may have reached a maximum timeframe. We have a lot of students that just simply end up with too many credit hours to qualify for aid anymore. They can still use these two fundings, which is awesome. So just because you're not eligible for Title IV does not mean you cannot qualify for the ARP. You certainly can, and the Carissa. Right. So the other uh, listed item I saw in there that I really didn't touch much on is scholarships. So for the scholarships, the financial aid students that receive scholarships apply for those on the CTC website and this information will take you there and show you what you need to do. You go in and do an application. They should open up again in January. And any of the scholarships that we award, we have the application process open in January. I believe it's still through March. And then they close it and start awarding for the following fall term. So always encourage people to do an application for a scholarship. And on some of your foundation scholarships, you may not receive a balance. And what that means is maybe you qualified for $2,000 and students don't often understand this. You may only need 800 for tuition. Well, it's also available to use at the bookstore for books, supplies, laptops, computers, anything you need. And if you don't use all that money, it actually goes back to the foundation. So a lot of the foundation scholarships do not allow for a balance check. So I would encourage you to use that money wisely 
and understand that some scholarships aren't used at all because you may have other aid that pays all of your costs first, but the Carissa and the ARP do not work that way. You will always get whatever balance you do not use or the full award if you choose to receive it rather than have it applied to your charges. So uh, one more side note about sure. the scholarships. Yes, our internal scholarships open in January, but with this academic works on this link, there is a link to some external scholarships that students qualify for, and those are year round. So you can apply for those and just follow the directions how to apply for those. Click the external link on there and that'll take you to those in addition to our internal foundation scholarships, as Pearl mentioned, open in January. So also there's Eagle Aid and the Eagle's Nest Food Pantry. So when you're on the scholarship link, you need to click on all these different types of options to see what all is available. Maybe you're struggling right now with finances and you need some food. We have a uh, Eagle's Nest Food Pantry. You can go over and contact them and they will be able to assist you with whatever items they may have on hand at the time to see if that would help you in any way. And sometimes you have some issues and need a few dollars for some for whatever reason. And the Eagle Aid is another one that you can contact and the website here has the Eagle Aid listed as well. So there are a lot of financial options outside of a FAFSA is what we're saying at CTC. And you want to explore all of them and take advantage of as many of them as you can qualify for. Indeed. All right, well, thank you. I'm going to stop sharing now. So. Uh... We've given the uh, students the, uh, a lot of information on how to get assistance. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we certainly appreciate that, Pearl. Are there any questions coming through on Facebook? Nothing here, no questions. So, all right. So, any last uh, pearls of wisdom? <laughs> money. Come get your free money and register for your classes. We need you to apply for these applications and make sure you get them done quickly. And just want to emphasize one more time that the Carissa and the ARP will not be awarded in August. They will be awarded in September based on the hours you're enrolled at at that time. So we will award, meaning you qualified. I'll put the award on your award notice. You'll see it with an E status that you cannot accept. And once I'm ready to transmit that money in September over to the business office for disbursement to you, I will change that award code to an accepted status and it will be transmitted at that same time. So it'll all be automatic for you. The only thing you need to know is once you do the application, you want to see the estimated award in your award notice and it will show. Okay. Right. I also okay. want to add. I also sure. want to add real fast, my daughter applied for the grant and it takes no more than five minutes, if that, to apply for these grants. It is so easy, so like self-explanatory. You check a couple boxes and then you're done. It's so easy and please do it. Yes, and it is all electronic, so you don't yeah. have to bring anything in. You don't have to turn anything in. You push a button and it gets sent over to yep. the uh, office that processes it and then it gets sent to me ultimately for the award. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you don't do something that simple, you're just throwing away free money. So yeah. correct. No, don't, uh, <laughs> don't waste that opportunity. <laughs> so, all right. That's, that other... is all I have, and I thank you all very much for participating and hope that you've learned a lot. <laughs> Pearl, thank you as always. You are a just a whole library of knowledge for us, and we certainly <laughs> appreciate it. So thank you. So I don't see any questions in WebEx, and I'm a I'm assuming that Mariselli doesn't have anything in Facebook and she hasn't typed anything in for us. So again, thank you all very much for being here today with us and I hope this information will help you. And again, we've given you the uh, uh, the links there in the chat to uh, apply and this session will be on YouTube later on. So if there's something that you missed or you want to review any of the information, you can pull it up on YouTube later today at the end of the day and uh, review it and get the links and, and anything other information, contact information that you need. So uh, we are here to help and we want to make sure that you are successful in your financial journeys here, your academic journeys here, and any other thing that CTC can help you with. And one last thing, come to the open house on Saturday, August 14th, 9 to 2. A great place to tour the facilities. Great place to get some more answers to you, any more of your questions. All right. Thank you all for being here. Take care. Thank you. Look forward to Bye. seeing you then. Okay. <laughs>